Hello there, scientists. How are you guys doing? Are you excited for our experiment today? I know I sure am, and I'm really excited to get to it. But first, we've got to go over our riddle. So, every day we do a riddle, and at the end of our video, after we read our chapter book, we figure out the riddle together because teamwork makes the dream work. Now, today's riddle is a little bit of a thinker, but hey, I know you got noggin power, so I'm excited. What are we talking about? Our riddle today is, if you drop me, I'm sure to crack. But if you smile, I smile back. What am I? All right, like I said, at the end of our video, we will figure it out together. So no sweat if you can't figure it out. All right, let's go do our experiment, guys. Hey guys, here we are with our science experiment. Get excited. So, as you can see, I've got some water in a little tub here. I've got two glasses of oil. I just used vegetable oil. You guys can use baby oil, vegetable oil, whatever you have handy. And then I also have some food coloring that we are going to color our oil. So this one will be pink, this one will be orange, and this is to help us later in the experiment. So, let's get a coloring. A few drops will do. Undo our pink. This color is always so vibrant. I'm always so excited to see how it'll turn out. All right, I'm going to mix. Mix, 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 mix. Ooh, this food coloring isn't mixing in. It's already an experiment in polarity. So the pink was able to break up a little bit more. The yellow, the orange, just kind of stayed orange. So we've got our water. Now you can see, boom, it's moving, it's grooving. Let's see what happens when we introduce some oil. I wonder why that's happening, why they aren't mixing. Interesting. These two oils, you can see there's little specks of the pink popping around in there that merged with, you can see the little specks of the orange, but why can't we mix it? Let's see. Oh no. That doesn't look like it's mixed, right? I wouldn't say so. Let's keep adding some oil, see what else we can find out. it won't go together. I wonder why that is. Stay tuned and find out. Did you guys enjoy today's experiment? I sure did. It was so cool to see how water and oil interacted. And it was really cool to see the colors all blend together. But why did that happen? How did that happen? Sure, it was cool to look at, but what's the science behind it? I'll tell you. So, we were doing a little experiment on polarity and surface tension. So what are those things? I'll tell you because they go hand in hand. Polarity is water. Water is polar, meaning that the hydrogen molecules in there are like little magnets looking for other hydrogen molecules in the water to bond with. So they're all kind of connecting together to make this surface tension, which the oil is not polar, so it doesn't have those same molecules doing the same thing, so it sits on top and it can't really, can't penetrate the water. It's insoluble, so it means it won't dissolve in the water. That's the science behind what we did today, and I hope it helps bring a little bit of light to what we're doing. So, now that we've talked a little bit more, let's jump right into our positive action. For our positive action today, we are going to be diving into yet another emotion or feeling. So to recap, we've covered anger, love, jealousy, and now pride. I really do recommend going to check out jealousy because it's an important thing to understand as we begin to unpack pride, as most of the times they go hand in hand. So let's talk about pride. What is pride? Pride isn't always a negative thing. It's important to be proud of yourself and all the awesome things that you do. 
because you are absolutely great and you are doing amazing things every day. But pride can also become a negative thing when we kind of boast ourselves up and think we're better than other folks. But in reality, nobody's better than anyone. We're all just here doing our best, trying to become the best versions of ourselves. Talking about pride, it's also very important that we talk about false pride and what exactly that is and what it means. So, what is false pride? False pride is when you take pride in something you didn't really do or didn't participate in. Think of it this way. You're doing a group project and maybe you didn't help that much, but your friend did the whole project, did everything, and you get that grade too, and you celebrate just the same way. And now you're kind of in class thinking, hmm, I'm pretty well off, I'm doing good, I did that, I'm proud. But in reality, you just stood there and got credit for it. That's false pride, where you didn't put the work in, but you're prideful about something you didn't really do. It's important that we know what false pride is so that we don't fall victim to it. Because when we think that we've done something we haven't, we're just playing a joke on ourselves and a not funny one at that. So now that we've talked about pride a little bit more and how it relates to jealousy, let's move on to our book, guys. Whew, I'm excited to see what craziness could possibly happen next. I hope you guys are ready to jump back into our perfectly peculiar book, James and the Giant Peach. If you guys remember, we last left off where the peach was absolutely the most gigantic peach ever found. It was bigger than a house or the size of a house. And those evil ants were about to charge people money to come and see that fruit. They said, if this fruit's here, we're gonna make money off of it. So let's see exactly what they do and what happens. Part eight. The news that a peach almost as big as a house had suddenly appeared in someone's garden spread like wildfire across the countryside. And the next day, a stream of people came scrambling up the steep hill to gaze upon this marvel. Quickly, Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker called in carpenters and had them build a strong fence around the peach to save it from the crowd. And at the same time, those two crafty women stationed themselves at the front gate with a large bunch of tickets and started charging everyone for coming in. Roll up, roll up, Aunt Spiker yelled. Only one shilling to see the giant peach. Here is a picture of them selling tickets to go see the giant peach. Half price for children under six weeks old, Aunt Spun shouted. One at a time, please. Don't push, don't push. You're all going to get in. Hey, you, come back there. You haven't paid. By lunchtime, the whole place was a seething mass of men, women, and children all pushing and shoving to get a glimpse of this miraculous fruit. Helicopters were landing like wasps all over the hill, and out of them poured swarms of newspaper reporters, cameramen, and men from television companies. It'll cost you double to bring in a camera, Aunt Spiker shouted. All right, all right, they answered. We don't care. And the money came rolling into the pockets of those two greedy ants. But while all this excitement was going on outside, poor James was forced to stay locked in his bedroom, peeping through the bars of his window at the crowds below. The disgusting little brute will only get in everyone's way if we let him wander about, Aunt Spiker had said earlier that morning. Oh, please, he begged. I haven't met any other children for years and years, and there are going to be lots of them down there for me to play with. And perhaps I could help you with the tickets? Shush up, Aunt Sponge had snapped. Your Aunt Spiker and I are about to become millionaires. And the last thing we want is the likes of you messing things up and getting in the way. Later, when the evening of the first day came and the people had all gone home, the ants unlocked James's door and ordered him to go outside and pick up all the banana skins and orange peel and bits of paper that the crowd had left behind. Could I please have something to eat first, he asked. I haven't had anything all day. No, they shouted, kicking him out of the door. We're too busy to make food. We're counting our money. But it's dark, cried James. Get 
out, they yelled, and stay out until you've cleaned up that whole mess. The door slammed and the key turned into the lock. Part nine. Hungry and trembling, James stood alone out in the open, wondering what to do. The night was all around him now, and the high overhead, a white wild moon was riding in the sky. There was not a sound, not a movement anywhere. Most people, and especially small children, are often quite scared of being outdoors alone in the moonlight. Everything is so deadly quiet, and the shadows are so long and black they keep turning into strange shapes that seem to move as you move. And the slightest little snap of a twig makes you jump. All right, here is a picture of James next to said giant peach. You can see that thing is absolutely massive. <laughs> Crazy. James felt exactly like that now. He stared straight ahead with large frightened eyes, hardly daring to breathe. Not far away in the middle of the garden, he could see the giant peach towering over everything else. Surely it was even bigger tonight than it was before. And what a dazzling sight it was. The moonlight was shining and glistening on the great curving sides, turning them into crystal and silver. It looked like a tremendous silver ball laying there in the grass, silent, mysterious, and wonderful. And then, all at once, little shivers of excitement began running over the skin of James's back. Something else, he told himself. Something stranger than ever this time is about to happen to me again, soon. He was sure of it. He could feel it coming. He looked around, wondering what on earth it was going to be. The garden lay soft and silver in the moonlight. The grass was wet with dew and millions of dewdrops were sparkling and twinkling like the diamonds around his feet. And now suddenly the whole place, the whole garden seemed to be alive with magic. Almost without knowing what he was doing, as though drawn by some powerful magnet, James Henry Trotter started walking towards the giant peach. He climbed over the fence that surrounded it and stood directly beneath it, staring up at its great bulging sides. He put a hand and touched it gently with the tip of one finger. It felt soft, warm, and slightly furry, like the skin of a baby mouse. He moved a step closer and rubbed his cheek slightly against it. And then suddenly, while he was doing this, he happened to notice right beside him, a close to the ground, there was a hole in the side of the peach. Oh, I wonder what that means. We are going to put our bookmark in there. So make sure you tune in tomorrow to check out exactly what happens next because I have a feeling it gets a little strange. And you know who else does? James, <laughs> he said it in the book. So make sure to tune in. All right, now that we have finished our chapter book, let's jump right into our riddle. Do you remember the riddle from the beginning of our video? No worries, I got you covered. Our riddle was, if you drop me, I'm sure to crack. But if you smile, I smile back. What am I? Did you figure it out? It was a bit of a thinker, but like I said at the beginning of the video, I know we got some smart cookies out there, so I'm not too worried about it. The answer to our riddle today is a mirror. Get it? If it falls, it's definitely gonna break. But if you give it a smile, there's another smiling face looking right back at you. <laughs> all right, so that's it. That's all we got planned for today. Make sure to tune in tomorrow to see what we're up to. All right, see ya. Thanks for watching.